Come on and bless the Lord, somebody. What an honor, what a privilege it is once again to be in this place at this time. Having an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We're living in the last days. And the coming of the Lord is at hand. And we don't have time to mess around, to play around. We got to commit ourselves to every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. I want to call your attention to the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter. And I want to begin reading at verse 10. Paul said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I want you to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil far because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take on you, unto you the whole arm of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, he says, stand therefore having your loins girded about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet charred with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, the shield of faith, where with you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And be sure to take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And even with the arm on, praying always, with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto, with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel. You can be seated. This is really awesome because Paul is instructing us. I want you to put on not just the arm of God. But I want you to put on the whole, all of the armor of God. I, I like that because he, he's instructing them, I don't want you to take some of it. I don't want you to get bits and pieces of the armor. I want you to have on all of the armor. And, and, and so we want to make sure that we are equipped. I like that because Paul is talking to the saints. He's telling them, I want you to be equipped. Now, we look at the armor. So what, we, what is the armor? We, the armor is, the purpose of the armor is for protection. And the, the, the thing about it is, <clears throat> with this armor, we got to make sure that we not know how to put it on correctly. You, you, you just can't just have the armor. You got to make sure that it put on correctly. It, it, you know, if you look at a football player, they got different armor, uh, armor or uh, protection. They got the shoulder pads. And you don't put them around your hips. They're shoulder pads. They got knee pads. They are not for your thighs. They are for your knees. 
And, and I'm saying that because if, if you see somebody come out of there with all of the equipment, but they got it in the wrong place, it's not going to do them any good. Because you can't take your helmet and, and then put it on your feet because it, it's not going to protect you. It, not, it was not de designed for your feet. And so what we have now is in this day and time that people are not protected. They're they jumping and shouting, but they don't have the full arm on. And so this is why that we got our adversary, the devil, he's going to and fro the earth seeking whom he may devour. And so this is why we got so many people falling because they are not properly equipped. We know that we, we have an adversary. We know we have an enemy. And, and his, his purpose, according to what Jesus said, he come about to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And the purpose of the armor is, is, is not, it is for offense and it's for defense. And, and, and you, you know, the, the sword, you can use it for offense or you can use it for defense. But you, you try, just like they're trying to kill you, you're you trying to kill the enemy. And so he put this, give us this analogy to, to tell us that you got to be protected. And, 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 you know, folks are going to church and they they hearing, you know, lover bar preachers and pretty bar preach, preachers and play bar preachers. But... There's nobody equipped in them. They, they, you, you know, when they focus the church, all they focus, down, focus on is praise. But you, you can't shout in the battle. You, you, you got to fight in the battle. And, and so you got to have something to fight with. You got to know how to defend yourself against the enemy. And we got too many people that's speaking in somebody's tongue, but they don't know how to defend themselves against the enemy. They don't have the right armor on. And, and you can rest assured, every one of us, if you save and, and you name it the name of Christ, you're under attack. The devil is trying to destroy you. The devil wants to lure you into a state of complacency. And, and, and see, this, this is the problem that many of us are facing is because we didn't be got, become at ease as Zion. But, you know, <clears throat> I remember a song that Sister Janice Thomas used to sing all the time, there's a war going on. And you got to fight. And see, that's what, we, you, you know, when you hear all of this junk that coming from these motivational speakers, they call themselves preachers, nobody's saying nothing about arm yourself likewise. You, you know, because our adversary, the devil, the devil never, ne has never stopped being the devil. And, and so what the devil is doing is doing everything that he can to destroy each and every one of us. And now when you look at a sinner man, woman, boy, or girl, they're out there in the world without God and without hope. We don't have nothing to fight against the enemy with. You know, that was a time that we was in the world. And that was a time we were just like other sinners. We was out there without God and without hope. But I praise God today that I'm in him. Oh, bless him. I got God and I got hope. And when we put on the whole arm of God, we got something to stand uh, in, in the midst of all adversity. Because let me tell you something. It's not saying if you have trials and tests. Uh, it's just a matter of when. Trials, tests, and adversity is the inevitable. If you hope to go to heaven, you got to go through some trials. You got to go through some tests. You got to endure pain. I, I remember the writer that said, endure hardness as a good soldier. If I listen to all of these motivational speakers or motivational preachers, and, and all they're doing is trying to encourage folks, I, I almost, I'm telling you some good things. But you are not preparing them for the real battle that's brewing in the world. There's a battle going on. 
And many folks are dying without Christ in their life because nobody has taught them how to use the armor. Nobody has told them that it was of a necessity that you put on, not on part of it. You got to put it all on. It doesn't make sense just to have a helmet and a sword. No, no, you got to have the breastplate of righteousness on. You got to have a breastplate. Uh, Y'all ain't going to talk. You got to have the shield of faith. Uh, come on and talk back to me. Because the devil is trying to kill you. He, he, you know, the devil is trying to kill you. Let, let me run that by you again. The devil is trying to kill you. And, and let me tell you something. Let me, let me, let me show you something here. In the book of 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, now we find that the children of Israel was in a battle against Saul, I mean against the Philistines. And so what was brewing is David under directives, the instructions, the, the orders of his dad, they say, hey, go out to the battlefield and take your brother some food. But when David came out there, the, the brothers took it and said, well, th th this is a brother. He's been always getting it. He is always dibbling and dabbling in our stuff. They want, first of all, they want to know why did you come out here. David said, I just came out here to bring you some food. His all, intention was all good. But lo and behold, when he get there, he hear Goliath standing out there woofing. He's standing out there challenging the army of Israel. And they shaking in their boots. Everybody is scared. Everybody is afraid of him. My God, he was making mockery out of the army of Israel. Saul the king was scared. And so he was trying to find a man, hopefully one of the soldiers that would say, I go out and fight for him, but all of them was afraid as well. But, oh, my God, David heard what was going on. And so David said, hey, I go out and fight him. Now, we got a little old short man, little old rut or something. But, you know, but he had a relationship with God. So you, you couldn't tell Saul that, hey, you, you know, uh, tell Goliath that he, you, you ain't got nothing to worry about you. you this is a sure thing here. <clears throat> but now David had a relationship with God. And in the 33rd verse, and Saul said to David, <clears throat> when they were and got back to Saul, that David said he'll go out and fight him. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, but, and he's a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. Now this is stand to reason that they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the words of their testimony. And he held fast to his testimony. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept the father, his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. I went out after him, and I smote him and delivered him, delivered it out of the mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And he's not going to stop there. This uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. Sin, he has defied the army of the living God. Now, somebody, and see, this, this is the problem. You know, when I came in a, a few Wednesdays ago, I, I had an attitude. David came in, he had an attitude. He said, so what's the problem, David? He's out there making mockery out of the army of Israel, the army of the true and the living God. And I can't stand idly by and allow this mess to take place.
Come on and talk back to me. And so somebody got to rise up in there.